us. They knew that we were losing money, but they had gone on with this thing, and so they needed the name. They needed the, the Cheech and Chong name, and so they, they busted us, and then they, they just gave me a deal. They said, either you give up or we'll go after your son. Right, I know you stuck up for yeah, your son. And, and, and your wife. Because she wrote the check, and I, and it wasn't a nothing illegal was going on, but they uh, and then they had us. They taped us. They taped them trying to buy bongs from us, and our company wouldn't send it to them. They said, "No, sorry, we, we we're not allowed to, uh, to ship the bongs to uh, to Pennsylvania." And so the feds came in person. To the, to the thing, and they already had an undercover guy in our business anyway. And so they arranged to send uh, a shipment to uh, Pennsylvania, which gave them the evidence to bust me. And it was all illegal, it was entrapment, it you know, it was undercovers, everything. The feds did everything, you know, illegal. But when they said, either you go or your son goes, you know, and then I said, I'll go for sure, you know. Because I, I, I wanted the adventure anyway. Wow. Were you scared when you walked in? No, not a bit. How not old were bit. you when you walked in? I, I grew up in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. I was in my 60s, late 60s. I grew up in Canada, in Vancouver, Calgary in Vancouver. And the only people I really knew, because I had a nightclub too, so were gangsters. You know, that was the only people I really knew. So I knew, I knew that life better than I knew, uh, you know, the college life. And everything. so before music, you had a club in Vancouver. Yeah, and then you. I was in a band. Pursued I, music yeah. that was a fucking Motown band. Yeah, or yeah. Is that yeah. true? Oh yeah, yeah. I heard we that had, years ago, and I'm. We like, had one of the best R and B singers in the, in the world. He's dead now, but Bobby Taylor was a legend. And what was the name of your band? Uh, Bobby Taylor and the Vancouver's. And the reason it was called Bobby Taylor and the Vancouver's was that we never had a name. We were a bar band. And so, so when they said, uh, what's the name of the group? And so we, Bobby and I, he, he got me into comedy. He was like a, a funny, funny guy, very funny. Like all black guys, you know, the, in, the, in the jazz and R&B world, they all, they're all comedians. But the thing is, they can sing, you know, but they can, they can be funny oh. and so when, when when they asked us uh, the name of our band we never had a name and so we were thinking of uh, crazy names and there was a band in texas at the time now this was i had to be 1966 67 yeah around 66 when we got it discovered 1966 there was a band in texas called 10 screaming niggers and so we said why don't we call our band four niggers and a chink and so, okay, so we put it up on the marquee, four niggers in it, now appearing, four niggers in a chink. And that night, uh, we, had, <laughs> we had one audience, one, one customer. <laughs> and it was a very angry black lady wrestler named Lottie the Body. And Lottie sat in the front row. We played a, set, we played a song or two, and she says, well, I see the niggers, but where's the chink? Now, my dad was Chinese, he didn't know about the sign. He's he's a doorman, and so he walked over to her to tell her, you know, you don't talk like that. You know? <laughs> and she picked him up and body slammed him with his ass on the floor. So I threw my guitar down. I ran down there. She picked me up, body slammed my ass, <laughs> and all the brothers on the stage were laughing their ass off. Man. They were just cracking up, and so we changed the name to uh, <laughs> Four Colored Guys and a Chinese Lad. And Motown said, no, 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 no. Now, what year is this? 1966, 67. 66, I'm just getting off the boat from Cuba, playing. Oh, really? They got me here. Yeah. 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 We, we did our, our record in 1967. <sighs> and we changed Motown because it was the first uh, interracial song, you know, Does Your Mama Know About Me? And uh, so Diana Ross, was, she was the one that really discovered us. She, she came to the club with the rest of the Supremes. They saw us play, and she fell in love with the... Or she actually fell in love with the drummer because she stole the drummer as soon as we went to Motown. She, she stole our drummer, but that was okay because we had a lot of drummers. But, uh, yeah, we, we were the first in a lot of ways. And then we discovered the Jackson 5. They, they uh, opened for us when they were... They won a high school contest 
And, and so uh, Bobby Taylor and the Vancouver's and Jerry Butler were playing at the uh, Regal Theater in Chicago. And uh, Jackson 5 opened the show. And they were the Jackson 5 plus Johnny, because a little cousin there. And so uh, Bobby Taylor told uh, Michael and, and Joe, his father, to, hey, come, come on to Detroit. We'll get you signed with Motown. And so they came and stayed at Bobby's house for uh, about a month. It took a month before they finally auditioned him. And then the rest is history. Did you ever bump into any of the Jacksons? Always. Oh, yeah, we're still pretty, we're tight. We, we, we have that history, you know, because uh, Jermaine, Jermaine was really the, the one that bonded with me the most. He actually did a cover of Does Your Mama Know About Me? And I saw Michael, and Cheech never really believed that story, you know. And so when we saw Michael at a, at a Grammy, the uh, 25-year Grammy get-together, uh, uh, Cheech went over to Michael and asked him if uh, that story was true. And, and Michael said, yeah, yeah, he discovered us. Yeah, that was Bobby Taylor. And then Michael asked me, he, he tried to talk a little comedy with me. He said, Tommy, do you think Bobby's funny? Now, I took it to mean, did I think Bobby was gay? And because Bobby was notorious, he's got a reputation of having a, a big uh, a Ron Jeremy, you know. And so, and I thought, is he gay? Yeah, probably. And so, <laughs> so I said, yeah, he probably is funny. And But he was trying to talk comedy, you know. He, Michael, like he likes to be an expert of everything. But yeah, he was, it was fun. That, that whole year was crazy. How did that band then? How did that band, did you guys break up? Oh, yeah, immediately. As <laughs> <laughs> soon as you get a hit, well, you know, as soon as they, they, they could pull Bobby away from the rest of the band. You see, They just want the singer. They don't want the band. And so, so that's what they did, the producers. You know. And then I got fired. I got fired from Motown. But because Barry knew my contribution to everything because i met we met barry uh right right in the beginning went over to his house and 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 we had uh, tom baird the guy that wrote the, the music genius that wrote does your mama know about me the music he uh, he we had to fly him in because we just showed up with the band and barry wanted the songwriters you know, that's what he was looking for so we we got tom baird in there and tom baird has got this thing of perfect pitch he could hear anything, a doorbell or something, he'd tell you what note it is. And he, he mesmerized Barry Gordy with, Barry Gordy would, when he heard the doorbell, and Tom na na named off the, the notes. Barry went over to the piano and checked it out. Oh, it's right, he's right. We're going in like fucking Marines, you understand me? Welcome to church, motherfucker. 